Hi, my name's Philip and I like talking about politics and in this video I'm going to discuss the problems with running carefully coordinated campaigns for a better future only to see some upper middle class twit, third generation inbred muppet think that they're helping because far from needing to build up alliances and plan careful campaigns, all you actually need to change the world is a full frontal lobotomy and a bag of glitter. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So yesterday, interesting day at the Labour Party conference, I spoke at length to the chair of the Labour campaign for electoral reform about how I could help boost what has already been a very successful campaign within the Labour Party to move us towards proportional representation. I mean, look at what they've already achieved. They have been visiting Labour CLPs in order to present their arguments directly to members, as well as to counter some of the arguments for first past the post that float around. Now, the overwhelming majority of party members want PR. It was no accident that delegates voted for PR in such massive numbers at both of the last two party conferences. The motion only failed to succeed in 2021 due to union opposition. Since then, Enough of the large unions have also formally adopted positions of being in favour of PR and happily voted the motion through at last year's conference. And how did that happen? The Labour campaign for electoral reform engaged with them. Then, this year, Labour's National Policy Forum issued a formal statement that first past the post was harmful to politics. It did not, unfortunately, swing behind the need for PR. But the official party line is now that first past the post is rubbish and should be replaced. This, again, is all part of that careful and intelligent campaign. It did not come about because someone whose parents have got enough money to let them squander their early adulthood masterminding genius political campaigns like, I know, I'll go to WH Smith, get a bag and some glitter and chuck it all over Keir Starmer. That'll convince him. As soon as I heard that this moronic stunt was in aid of PR, I just thought, oh, shit. There I am, trying to help what I think is the most important cause for the next parliament. To fight for a cause, you need to bring people together. You need to win them over. You need to show them how your idea is in their interests. You do not achieve anything by throwing glitter at someone and listing demands. Because that was used. We demand, he said. If ever there was a marker of childish student politics, that is it right there. We demand. Oh, really? You demand, do you? With what do you demand? What are you going to use to, to press your demand against me? What's that? Oh, a bag of glitter? Yeah, no. That's the opening words of a campaigner who has never achieved anything in their lives. The people who actually achieve, the ones who achieve change, they do not demand things of the people they want to convince. They may say they demand of people that they know are their opponents, but the ones they need on side, they don't demand things of them. They work out what they want and they, and they then explain how their idea is going to help them. But an act like this, it's worse than simply not being effective. It actually harms the efforts of those who are serious about the campaign and don't just want to justify their distaste for having a career by going, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not unemployed, I'm, I'm, I'm campaigning, you see. Like I say, PR is going to be my number one policy priority. There are lots of very important changes that we need to see, and as far as I'm concerned, all of them are easier with PR, and none of them can be protected in the long term without PR. No matter what reforms you bring in, no matter how successfully you do it, the Tories can set fire to it all when they come back to office. And they will come back to office with first past the post. The last thing I needed was the PR equivalent of just stop oil. Oh, but we're campaigning for the environment. Right, well, OK, now we've got 100 new North Sea gas and oil licences granted and draconian anti-protest laws on the statute books. Thanks for that. That was a great help. Why couldn't he have been protesting for something I don't want? But I'd really like to know what goes through their heads when they do this. I'd love to ask that. Like, what's the thought process? 
the guy has a physics degree. So he can't be unintelligent as such. What goes through your head? What's the strategic thinking? Like, I'd love to see the chart on the wall. There must have been a chart on the wall. On the left-hand side, right, this is where we are. On the right-hand side, well, this is where we want to be, proportional representation. Then in the middle, you've got your stages. How are you going to get there? What you need to implement to get from the left-hand side of the board to the right-hand side of the board. Only, instead of stages like find group with aims that are aligned with us, uh, raise profile within the Labour Party, uh, work out how to build up connections with Labour MPs and the Labour, Labour Leaders Office, uh, work out how to make external campaigns more visible, um, engage with the public. You've got, just in the middle, chuck a bag of glitter at someone. How does that work in the head of someone who passed an exam on thermodynamics? Which is another problem. Like when I tell people I've got a physics degree, they think, oh, I must be clever. Doesn't necessarily last if I keep my mouth flapping, but at that moment, they think I'm clever. That notion is probably washed away now as well. What, you mean you got the same degree as that tosser who chucked a bag of glitter thinking it was going to somehow change the electoral system? Yeah, that's the one. And it's conceit really, isn't it? Idiots with no history of success thinking they know better than those who've actually achieved something. If you're a 20-something year old, and you want to get involved in a campaign, you approach those who've done something, surely. You don't go and ask for advice by those who've spent their lives shouting a lot and achieving nothing. Worse still, those who've actually just made things worse. How conceited do you have to be to think that an established campaign, which has been making progress, is getting it all wrong? All you actually need is a bag of glitter. And what did they hope would be the result? Seriously, what did they, in their head, they must have imagined a consequence. What did they think was the consequence, the reaction? That Starmer would say, actually, I hadn't actually intended to mention electoral reform in my speech, but do you know what? I'm looking super cool in this glitter, so fair enough, let's do PR. Now, what he's actually done is risked now being associated with the serious campaigns. Speaking of which, for those who also want to push for proportional representation, we are going to be doing monthly streams with the organisers of the campaign in Labour in order to try and achieve like three main aims from my point of view. First, explain the arguments for and benefits of PR. Second, raise awareness of the progress which has already been made and what the next steps are. And third, to connect way more people into the campaign. As I've said before, and I'll keep saying, especially if you're a Labour member, if you have a tennis spare, don't buy a plastic bag and a load of glitter. Doesn't actually achieve anything. Use it to join the Labour campaign for electoral reform. Ten or a year, that's all it is. The more members they have, the more influence they are afforded within the Labour Party. And if you're not a member of the Labour Party, you can still join them, but, you know, get involved with the pro-PR campaign which makes most sense to you. Preferably one which thinks that the way to achieve their aims is to reach consensus in the spirit of mutual respect not people who think lobbing glitter balls is the way to go. Description to some useful links in the description below. Oh, and if anyone lives in Surrey and you see this half-wit knocking about, maybe think about lobbing a bag of glitter at him. Demand a kebab and cheesy fries and see if he gives it to you. And if he doesn't, might be worth pointing out to him that he's just disproved his own argument that glittering demands work. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.